Dungeons and Daddies is a rowdy, horny, violent podcast for grown-ups. Content warnings can be found in the episode description. Hey, uh, Glenn, what do you, what do you uh, got going on there? A little music for the road? Uh, yeah, man, uh, check this out. On a dark desert highway Four dads lost their boys When the van they were riding God Sucked into a void We learned they were sold into Slavery by the lands And Daryl's cursed to kill his son and eat his skin oh, Cause he promised okay. when he shook his oh, hand all I think about. Tried to help a dragon by the name of Cod Talk I believe it was Bartok Boned up that one yeah, we uh, we sure did. When we killed his son. I did not kill. I I put on the manly manly. Now bracelet. we're on the road to never winter, and on the gates they've hung the doodler drawn by Henry's sons. Welcome to Dungeons and Daddies, not a BDSM podcast. This is a real play D&D podcast where four dads from our realm are flung into the Forgotten Realms on the quest to rescue their lost sons. My name is Freddie Wong and I play Glenn Close, rock and roll cover band dad. Little fact about Glenn Close. I've mentioned this to my friends here. Uh, but I want to mention this to everybody out there listening, uh, especially those of you who work at guitar companies. Glenn Close plays a guitar of indeterminate brand and origin, and it will be determined as such. <laughs> and, when, when, and whenever said guitar company will contact me at F Wong about what guitar they want Glenn Close to play by sending me that guitar. Guess what? That's canonically what Glenn Close will play. So right now he plays an acoustic. It could be any type of acoustic. Gibson, Taylor, Fender. I'm looking at you. You Hit too could have a guitar owned by a character who is maybe the worst dad in the entire group <laughs> who lets his kids smoke pot and hasn't been around for the past 20 years. It's everything the Gibson brand aspires to. <laughs> I'm Henry Oak, played by Will Campos. I should have said that the other way. Fun fact about Henry, he's a granola munching, sandal wearing, Birkenstock dad, and his favorite TV show is the uh, cult classic TV program known as Bones. <laughs> Featuring forensic for anthropologist Dr. Temperance Bones Brennan and cocky FBI special agent Seely Booth. Uh, he can't get enough bones, this guy. How come, how come the FBI agent's uh, nickname isn't Joe FBI? Wouldn't I, that be more in line with the dumb naming convention in that show? You know, David Boreanaz deserves more respect. <laughs> <laughs> with a neck that big. Uh, oh, my God. <laughs> What? I, if David Boreanaz no, ever no, listened no, to this podcast, I'm so sorry. David Boreanaz. Wait, hold on, guys. David Boreanaz, I'm so sorry. I'm a huge fan. I'm not, <laughs> like, it's not, don't laugh about it. I. I, love I really Angel. Love Anytime you. David so Bones Boreanaz wants to come on this podcast, yeah. he's welcome to. Yeah, all of his sponsors out there who can get me, David <laughs> Boreanaz, <laughs> of indeterminate <laughs> origin, yes. <laughs> uh, hey, what's up? I'm Beth May. I play... Ron Stampler. And the fun fact about Ron, uh, he thinks that a hug is a type of dog. <laughs> <laughs> oh my God. <laughs> my name is Matthew Arnold, and I play Daryl Wilson, a stay at home uh, sports dad. And um, fun fact is, my favorite TV show used to be Bones, but then the sixth <gasps> season when they backdoor pilot The Finder. I really enjoyed that show. I thought it was a little more macho, but still upset that they canceled it after only six episodes. So I thought that was a house spinoff. No, The Finder is a Bone spinoff. What? Yeah. Why the fuck do you guys know so much about Bones? <laughs> <laughs> Join us next week for Beth May's Bones fan podcast. Sounds like Daryl and uh, Henry are going to have some some Bones, yeah, some bones talk to, to do on this episode. We're going to have to organically find a way to get Bones to show up during the podcast. <laughs> God. I think we got a DM. Just a second. I got to write down Bones. <laughs> Just in case this is something I need to care about later on. <laughs> God, I hope I don't have to care about it. You should watch that show. It's a good show. I don't want to watch it. I don't like procedurals. <laughs> so I'm Anthony Birch. I'm the Daddy Master. And uh, I guess a fact about this game is that after we recorded our uh, unaired pilot, which you may get to listen to one day, 
uh, Beth was very proudly like, I think my guy voice is so good. No one will know <laughs> that a, a girl is playing Ron Stampley. She was like genuinely super proud of herself. And as you can now tell, it is basically the exact same as no, Beth's I, I think the way she described it is actually she said, I was like, I was a little concerned that maybe people wouldn't know <laughs> there was a girl on this podcast. <laughs> is my voice too good? Should is we, it too convincing? Should we introduce the show by saying there, just make sure everybody knows there is a girl on this podcast because nobody will be able to tell. Oh my God. Yeah. I'm still a little bit worried. Um, you guys will cut this out. People will never know. It's me, Ron. Welcome to episode three, The Lord of Chaos. All right. So to briefly summarize where we last left our intrepid daddies, you had just sort of driven away from what is, to be completely frank, a side quest with uh, <laughs> a fairy dragon and his kids, and, and you found a way to sort of make things okay, even though you murdered one of the kids, but you basically gave him two golden that a, rules. That was a solid draw, I think. <laughs> yeah, yeah. Yeah. I'd say it was. you left his, his life exactly as good as it was <laughs> when you first met him. I think we might have defended the institution of dragon slavery. I'm not sure. <laughs> Slightly. <laughs> <laughs> you kind of left it up to them. It's not on us to figure that one yeah. out. Either way, you finally made it to uh, the city of Neverwinter, and to your great surprise, upon the drawbridge leading into the city, you saw a very large banner that clearly depicted the Doodler, which is the mascot for West Rock Elementary's uh, sports team, and more importantly, was uh, initially drawn and conceived by Henry Oak's kids, Lark and Sparrow. I'm so proud of those two beautiful boys. I'm so excited for them that their, their work is finally getting uh, so much recognition. Have we established canonically what the hell the doodler is? No. I, I don't think we should. <laughs> yeah. <laughs> the only thing that we the only thing I know is that Darren Wilson definitely does not like the doodler and thought the school should be called the Grizzlies and he drew his own like really buff grizzly bear <laughs> icon and every time he sees the doodler it annoys him. So that's all I know. So it's so it's on like the drawbridge, is that right? There's a there's a banner. Basically you can see oh, that there's a big it. old banner that is like hung in front of what presumably was the city's original banner that you can still sort of see behind it that's like orange and gold. So they didn't bother taking it down? No, they were just like, man, we're just going to put this on top of this for a while. That's okay. environmental storytelling, baby. <laughs> <laughs> right, hey, guys, look at that doodler banner. They just put it over the original one. They must have done it like rather quickly. Do you think this just happened? I, I don't know. I'm just I'm just still getting over the shock that they know what the doodler is. Yeah, tell so, me about it. As you guys are talking, one of the parapets above the drawbridge, a guard, a human guard, sort of peeks over the side and goes, "Who goes there?" Uh, Carol Wilson. <laughs> uh, I, I, hello, you've got you've got some gentlemen looking for their sons. Are we in the car? Stepsons. There's and stepsons. Are we in the car? I think we are in the car. Who's in the front? I'm driving. You're driving, and then I'll get. We'll say that uh, Henry's sitting right in shotgun. Yeah. What manner of beast is this? It's uh it's I look at I look at I look at Henry Oak and I give him a sign to like come up with something. <laughs> it is a the, it is an Odyssey of Honda. <laughs> it, a, a white beast from many a league f far from here and from it the has, land of the rising sun. From the yes. land of the rising sun, it has mighty circular wheels for feet and can carry many a soldier. But don't worry, it's it's dead. Do you guys, you, you, do you have hermit crabs where you are? No, what is that? It's like a hermit crab. This was from the ocean. This it is like is a the dead shell. shell. Yes, the shell of a mighty beast that we warriors slayed, and now we use it as our means of conveyance. Yeah, it keeps you, it like protects you from rain. You guys have <laughs> rain. <laughs> Yeah, we have rain, Yeah, dick. so it lets us travel <laughs> and protect us from rain and, and sun. Just because we don't have hobo crabs doesn't mean that we don't have rain. <laughs> so, uh, yeah, it's just, it's just a dead, it's the shell of a dead beast. Uh, Go ahead just, and roll persuasion. Um, that's a one. I'm gonna, <laughs> one? <laughs> yeah, one? it's a one. I'm going to try to assist. Minus one, zero. <laughs> It doesn't matter if you assist. That's you okay. fucked up too bad. Uh, <laughs> he, he shouts, Alara! And four more guys appear on the parapets with crossbows aimed at the Honda Odyssey. I roll up the windows, by the way. <laughs> <laughs> hey, guys, don't we have those uh, spare soccer jerseys? Oh. Seeing as they're, oh, uh, they got this thing up there, maybe we put it on and say that we're, you know... Good call, good call, yeah, good call, good call. Just saying. Let's pass out they're those all, jerseys. Gosh, they're all kid sizes, though. <laughs> Who's the smallest of us? Definitely not me. <laughs> <laughs> I flex. 
Um, I may be five four and hundred and twenty ish pounds. Oh, you're so small. Uh, that's not the small part of me, though. <laughs> oh my god! All right, Ron. <laughs> All right, so I guess it's but, Ron. But w- I, only because I'm wearing the t-shirt on my torso, am I the smallest person to wear this small thing? Right. Sure. Sure. <laughs> Ron, I think if we it got... weren't on my torso, right. uh-huh. you'd have to get an extra extra large. <laughs> Dad huddle. <laughs> Ron, sit over there. <laughs> you and your real, real, real dad huddle. Real dad, real dad huddle. huddle. Real dad huddle. <laughs> what, what, what do you mean? Guys, we'll, what be do right you mean real... we'll be right back, Ron. Put that shirt on. Put that shirt on. <laughs> Just put the shirt on and hum to yourself. <laughs> Guys, is, is Ron saying that he has a big wiener or a small wiener? I can't tell. I have a huge wiener and a tiny little body. <laughs> Like a disproportionate wiener, man. It's something. It's something that we're definitely gonna have to find out, though. Okay, let's we'll, we'll, let's table this conversation okay. and get back to the task at hand. Uh, Ron, how's the shirt coming along? It actually fits pretty good. Okay, all right. I great. Wore it on my torso. I definitely think it's good that only one. We don't all need to go out with the doodler shirts, just in case. Not saying they will shoot you. I'm just saying that it's probably good that one of us steps out with a doodler shirt. I think Ron is the best man for the job. Because he's the smallest target. But the biggest in some ways, am I right? Yeah, <laughs> wink, biggest target. I wink at Ron. Yes, yes, this is great. This is great. I will. I step out of the van. I say, good luck, big boy, and I, I give you a slap on the butt as you get out of the minivan. You reach way over to get that <laughs> yeah, butt slap yeah. in. Awkwardly. Hey, uh, hey, hey, Daryl. Is that thing where that seatbelt stops me? Daryl. <laughs> it just yeah. sort of graze him with lightly with the yeah. tip of a finger. <laughs> That's way worse. Yeah. <laughs> hey, Daryl, Daryl. Yo. Um, <laughs> yo, <laughs> what's up, Glenn? I'm hey. trying to talk like you. <laughs> hey, Daryl, maybe like honk the horn and freak them out so they don't shoot at our boy Ron. I don't know if in a tense situation honking a horn is the best option, but uh, uh yeah, fuck it. <laughs> All right, roll intimidation. Let's hope this goes better than the perception roll. Fifteen plus one. That's a sixteen. There we go. Ooh. So you see the uh, guards go. Ah! <laughs> and they all sort of step back and they lower their crossbows for just a second. And just as they're about to raise them, they see Ron Stampler walk out wearing the doodler shirt. And the first guard, the one that, that would initially call to you, gasps audibly and says, another emissary? That can't, that can't be right. Oh, shit. <laughs> what are you? Who are you? Ron Vamp. <laughs> you wouldn't know. I mean, have you heard of me? Um, I am the best dancer from my high school prom, and if you shot arrows, you wouldn't even be able to hit me. So, I put the don't car, even deal. I, I put the car in reverse. <laughs> <laughs> Just getting ready. I, I'm frantically putting on a doodler shirt that I found in the back seat to try to get out there and help uh, and help Ron out. Okay. I uh, shake my head like, no, I got this. <laughs> <laughs> it's going really well. It's going really well for me, Dad. All right, ro- roll, uh, roll persuasion. <laughs> 16. <laughs> so the guards all sort of exchange glances and they go like, he's even weirder than the other two. <laughs> <laughs> all right. I, I, I assume, I assume they'll want to see this one too. Uh, lower oh, lower the drawbridge. Oh, oh, there, two? Other. Were there two? There were, there were two others. Lower the drawbridge. Okay. I think we're just, I think drawbridge. that might be my voice. <laughs> they were scared to see the, the doodler of dance. All right, Ron, Ron you should get Stampler. back in here. I think we should all put on doodler shirts. Okay. Everyone stuff on them doodlers. Do we have to roll to put on these shirts? I got natural 20. <laughs> so you guys watch me. It's like, you know those YouTube videos where like some lady like shows you how to like fold a shirt in one motion. And yeah, like how yeah, they yeah. do that? Love them. That happened, but onto me. Like somehow I just. The biggest the boy. Up, the biggest boy. You're like, how'd that and happen? It's really, it's, it, it not looks only good. is it form fitting, it's like, damn, it looks like you lost like five pounds. Yeah, you like look like one on. of those. You ever see like the buff ref at a football game? <laughs> <laughs> like the tailored like yeah. to their bicep ref shirt. It's like Anderson Cooper in a war zone. <laughs> yeah. <laughs> It's like my tummy, my tummy fat gets pushed up to my pecs in just the right way that it looks, like it looks buff. I'm like, damn, this shirt's feeling good. Looking good, too, Oh, Carol. thanks, Ron. I'm big in some places, too, you know what I mean? And I wink. Yeah, your pecs are great. Thanks, yeah. that's what I meant. Gun roll for fits. I got an 11. I don't know what I add to it, that, but I you feel put like- it, You put it on, it rips in the back, but you can still, it's still on your torso. Okay, good, So, like, you, you're kind of wearing it. What does a seven get me? A seven gets you nothing. You can't even fit inside of it. I'm going to leave it off. I'm going to stick with my Harley Davidson jacket. I just want to say I do think Daryl looks in the mirror of the van and like he 
he likes the way he looks for the first time in a long time. <laughs> oh, wow. No. He's just like, all right, I'm doing pretty good. <laughs> men's warehouse and it's a doodler shirt. You're going to like the way he looks. Henry notices Daryl Meyer and himself is like, hey, doodler's not such a bad mascot after all. Am I right? <laughs> <laughs> I start the car. <laughs> all right. Do you guys drive into the city? Here we yeah, all in, right? Yeah, yeah, yeah. 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 Okay. The, the, the previous city that you were at, Phandalin, was pretty cool. You know, you saw some things you'd never seen before. You saw bipedal dragonborn and all that kind of stuff. But this is on a complete other level. This is like if somebody took New York City and made it a Lord of the Rings of Hyde, essentially. You see uh, man-sized snakes slithering around on not legs, but just like, you know, whatever the part of a snake is that you would consider to be their legs, their bottom half. Sounds like the Big Apple, am I right? <laughs> Everyone take a D4 of Oh, no. <laughs> Stop doing this to us. Okay. But That's four. Glenn takes half damage, and as the rest of you see Glenn sort of like, huh, and almost accept it in a way rather than feel pain from it, it changes something in you as well. And so now from now on, when dad joke happens, you will take half of a d4 of damage just like uh, uh, Glenn does. Okay, but I took d4 right now. Uh, yeah, right yeah. Right now you take the okay. full d4. I took four. Woof. I took three. Oof. I didn't realize that the dad jokes counted for out-of-character dad jokes, too, but I'm glad that they do. <laughs> if I feel pain, everyone has to feel pain. <laughs> Truly a daddy mask. <laughs> so, uh, yeah, you see uh, buildings that are two, three stories high, um, whereas in the previous town you were in, it was all a lot, of, a lot of stuff that was low to the ground. You see a, a group of people walking around in black cloaks that initially are like, oh, they're just like people, but then you see a beak pe- poking out of them and feathers, and you realize these are these are like bird people of some sort. Um, they're Choco pe- bros, if you will. <laughs> That's too nerdy to be a dad joke, so we're fine. <laughs> I wasn't trying, I was just saying it. <laughs> and you see uh, a lot of people hawking their wares, you know, jars full of liquids of <laughs> colors that your brain can't even... <laughs> Were, were the birds know. hawking the wares? Hawking the wares. <laughs> okay, you know what? Never mind. <laughs> I think we get the. I just, think, I, I just think we heal for that one. Just <laughs> Freddie and Beth take a D6 of it. <laughs> a D6? Oh yeah, D6. God. Oh, shit. This you get to half it, though, because of the previous rules I set down. What? That's a, definitely a D10 you just <laughs> rolled. A D10. You took nine damage for your D6. That's a clue. That's it's a wrong cube. Dice. The one that looks like a cube is a D6. The one that looks like a dice? The one I didn't have. <laughs> Don't even have. See, I can only use what I'm given. I have a three. Okay, so you take one damage. <laughs> okay. I think it's unfair for us to be punished by your indiscretions. <laughs> hey, uh, boys, how about we uh, yeah, stop just... this car and just take a short rest really quick? <laughs> 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 just because our daddy master won't join the flock. I lock on the car doors and I look at the daddy master and say, hmm, can we take a short rest? <laughs> sure. Sure, if you want, I'll take a short rest. You can. You can take a nap in the car. All right. <laughs> I like that. So this fantasy kingdom saw us pull up in a minivan, make four jokes, drive through the doors, and then take a nap. <laughs> yeah. All right. Daryl's tired, boys. I just stop. I stop the car, and I instantly put my seat back, definitely hitting Glenn, who's behind me, and I just start snoring. So first of all, everybody take a short rest. Roll your hit die. Get that many HP back. But because you took a short rest in a very civilized location... You awake to see the guards that previously were talking to you on the the parapets. All of them are surrounding the Honda Odyssey with spears drawn. <laughs> oh, oh, good, oh, 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 whoa, boy. Um, hey, I, Marty, you should probably go out there and talk to them again. <laughs> I unroll the window. Pardon us, for we are weary from our travels. Uh, but we, we are eager to make conversation with the, the previous two emissaries that entered this city. Do you happen to know where they are? The previous two emissaries were destroyed or disappeared. <gasps> you, you must surely know this if you are also one of the doodler's ilk. Sorry, Henry. Oh. Does, how, how, how old and adorable were the two emissaries <laughs> that proceeded? Did they, did they have sandy brown hair and were they, you know, they looked like they could be twins even though they were, they were. They about- looked like the same man. It was the same. It was one child, but twice. <gasps> and you destroyed them? No, 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 no. We didn't destroy them. They came to us. In the night, okay. they spoke very confusing words. They, in the night, disappeared, and when the next day came, in their place was the Lord of Chaos. Surely you would know these things. You are of the of the emissary of the, the Lord of Chaos. Who is the Lord of Chaos? Also, Henry, it might not be your kids. <laughs> really quick, were they like were they like really dweeby and one and both kind of weak and kind of walked funny? I I, I do not know what the word dweeby means, but they were certainly small. In weaken as much as if I needed to fight them, I'm sure I could, for I'm very strong. Oh, so they're not my kid. Yeah, no, you're, no, <laughs> neither, no, you're, neither of those kids are my kid. Yeah, no, Terry's Terry's a big boy. Um, all right, they yeah, were loud. They liked, They they were rambunctious. They spoke often of fighting. Oh my God, it's my two boys. 
Where are they now? They left? We do not know. They disappeared in the night. And this Lord of Chaos that you speak of, um... Mayhap he devoured them? <laughs> I'm gonna roll the window up. Guys, what's going on? <laughs> I roll the window down and I lean out. Wait, so them. your side? <laughs> yeah, I roll my window you down. You talked to a different guy. And I was like, <laughs> different hey, uh, guy. <laughs> hey, sorry, that, uh, that guy's just having a tough day. Uh, come over and talk to me. So uh, this Lord of Chaos. You want me to walk around the, this beast? Yeah, just come over here. I kind of like lean out. I'm like, come over here. You could get out. Um, sure, yeah, I could do that. I go ahead and I get out of the van. I put my hand out. Daryl Wilson, go, oh, nice to meet you. Another emissary. Yeah, yeah, yeah. Looks good on me, right? It does. Ah, thanks. <laughs> Put my hand down. I shake his hand. He reaches out and shakes your hand. All right. So uh, the Sword of Chaos, uh, what, what exactly happened? The emissary, the, your, your progenitors came in. They mm -hmm. spoke many confusing words. Like progenitors, am I right? Yeah. That's, yeah. What, can you, what does that word mean? I gently explain the word progenitors to uh, Daryl. Give me one sec. I roll down the window and I lean my head in so that Glenn can tell me what progenitors means. Uh, progenitors is just like a real fancy, like... Tolkien way of saying uh, the people that came before us. What way? What's Tolkien? Yeah. Uh, you know what? Don't worry about it. <laughs> All right. <laughs> so anyways, before. so okay, they came, be, the, the, those, those dweeby kids came and then... Just like I'm Googling progenitor. Uh, no, it's I did it wrong. <laughs> progenitor means descendant. Uh, the something descended from from you, not think that preceded uh, you. Do you want to change no. that just oh. because that you don't want to say that I thought that kids. was progressive car insurance. <laughs> We'll just we'll just roll with it. It's fine. Uh, it's fine. This this particular guard is not very well versed in vocabulary. Yes. So now that, that's his he, thing. This, now this he'll guard, just say words slightly this wrong. Guard, this guard has been studying for the SAT equivalent <laughs> and has been kind of muddling up those big words, huh? Yes. So the the, the wherewithal of the children came mm. and uh, they disappeared. We know not uh, uh, why forth. When you say disappeared, do you mean they literally you were staring at them and they disappeared or they went somewhere that you don't know where they went? We took them to the Drunken Drow Tavern. They laid down for the night. When we checked their room in the morning, they were gone. Mm. But the Lord of Chaos made himself known and demanded certain things of us. And I'm certain would like to see you. I unrolled the window again. You say my boys went to the inn. You didn't give them any sugar before bed, did you? <laughs> <laughs> they availed themselves of the myriad of... of Bakery treats and delights. That oh, were dear God. End. What's the matter? Well, I don't know if that inn is still standing. That's all. <laughs> <laughs> um, we are not the fathers of those two boys, and we are not responsible for any damages they may have incurred. That's between them and the owner of the place that they destroyed. I'm assuming that they destroyed. If they didn't destroy it, don't worry about it. It seemed to be pretty okay. Ooh, I mean, the, the, okay. but the, wait, the fathers of those two boys seemingly did not have fathers. Well, every, every boy has a father. Yeah, but they are, what, what? But they are not. they were not boys. They are like you, MSA. Okay, we we are going to send you to we, you, you must you must meet the Lord of Chaos. This is far too confusing. Should we know anything about this Lord of and we've met Lord of Chaoses before, but like yeah. is there anything special about this Lord of Chaos like that we should know about before we meet? Like should we have weapons? What that is a very confusing question. I I don't know. <laughs> the Lord of Chaos what the Lord of Chaos will do with you what he wilt. Mm. Um, I roll down the window. I roll down my roll down I now roll down also my window. Also this guy, who's this guy? What's this guy's hey, deal? Hey, what's up? How's it going? Um uh, I look down. I realize he's I'm our not jester. I look down. And I realize I'm not dressed. I go, ah, right, 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 and I roll the window back up. <laughs> <laughs> um, I, 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 I've recovered my my composition a little bit here. I, I've I've adjusted the shock of the situation, and I think we should call a quick dad huddle and talk about what's going on. All right, uh, give us one second, good sir, and I roll the windows up. Okay. Okay, guys. So uh, it sounds Wait, like Henry. Is this a real dad huddle? This is for <laughs> all dads in the huddle. All, all right. dads in the huddle. Thanks. Okay. Thanks, so, Henry. That means a lot. It sounds to me like my boys came and made some sort of crazy bluff about what the doodler was. Maybe they think it's some sort of weird monster. I mean, it does look pretty hideous and terrifying, like I'm willing to admit. But I think that's what gives it such great school spirit. Is It's like it's kind of like that weird... Uh, go on, Henry. Yeah, go <sighs> yeah. ahead. I think we should go see this Lord of Chaos guy, because maybe he knows what happened to our kids. Yeah, I'm okay yeah, with that. Yeah, just... Really quick, uh, Henry, you really think we need a dad huddle to say that we're going to go see the Lord of Chaos? <laughs> <laughs> I just think. <laughs> what the fuck? I, it seemed like we were, uh, I, I mean, okay, all right, okay. I, I, guess. I, just, I just feel like it could have been an email. You didn't have to set yeah. a meeting. All right, well, I, at any rate, I, I think we should just keep going. I, I, think I close the door and I go, fucking dude, there should have been a bear. And I go, <laughs> yeah, let's go see this Lord of Chaos. Uh, where should we drive our mighty hermit crab? 
Uh, you'll probably wish to go to um, Ankara, the entertaining's uh, pit of myriad delights. It's on the opposite side of the docks district. It, you just and it gives you directions. You have to turn right and go past the, the bleeding <laughs> Take elf. A third and, right. And, yeah. Uh, uh, sorry, the uh, bleeding uh, elephant. Yeah, the bleeding elf. The bleeding oh. elf. There's an elf that's standing on the corner that's just constantly bleeding and just with its hands out asking for for coins. Sounds like my oh. wife. Am I right, fellas? Oh god. <laughs> <laughs> no, I mean, she sounds she sounds like a good elf. Let's let's yeah. let's no, proceed forth. Daryl Wilson holds the keys and he looks at uh, Henry, who I'm assuming looks pretty upset, and uh, he goes, uh, "Hey, Henry." Yes, Daryl. I toss you the keys. <gasps> Hey, why don't you uh, drive the beast? Maybe uh, make sure your boys are all right. I, I mean, I haven't driven much bigger than a Kia Sorento before, but I guess I could try my could uh, try my hand at this. But thank you. Um, th- maybe this will give me something to focus on uh, besides the fact that my kids might have been yeah. devoured by some sort of chaos lord. I'm not sure exactly how what's going on. Uh, all right. Well, I'm going to go ahead and try to follow the directions to the uh, pit of myriad delights. While he's driving, can I do a sleight of hand check to try to steal from some of Charleston's shoes? <laughs> Since he's distracted while driving, yeah, go ahead and do that with advantage. Sleight of hand. That's a nineteen plus uh, one, so All twenty. Right, roll, roll perception. Will I got a twelve plus five, which is a seventeen. I do not see. All right, the theft of the Charleston shoes, but I, I will like. I would like to state for the record that I have been keeping count of the Charleston <laughs> shoes. So the next time Henry checks the books, he might sense something is amiss. I grab one and I start pulling it. And I go, uh, and I go for another one. Oh, what? This is a dark day for you. I got 19. So you got another I- 19. <laughs> I got a natural 20. Oh, my Daryl! God. <laughs> but I thought you wanted what? me to drive because I'm having a tough day. Just keep driving. You, sir, have an addiction to chocolate that you need to deal with. And I will not have my trust undermined by the likes of you for some Charleston shoes. You get those when you earn them, sir. And I snatch it out of his hands. I look in the mirror and I don't look as good as I did a few moments ago. <laughs> do you like? Do you like kind of like slouch? And yeah, like I slouch. Now. Okay, now all of a sudden, all my pecs fat goes back to my stomach. <laughs> roll, roll, roll a d twenty. <laughs> okay. What? Fifteen. Okay. The shirt stays on. <laughs> <laughs> all right. This is turning into a magic mic roll. <laughs> Uh, some sensitive boys in this car. All right, so I drive towards uh, the directions that we got. Okay, great. So, uh, wait, did we pass the bleeding elf yet? Yeah. Okay, I pull up to the bleeding elf. All right, and I unroll the window. No, no don't give them any money. And I say, "Hello, sir, bleeding elf." <laughs> Hello, alms, please. <laughs> well, I'm alms. fresh out of alms, but I have one of these for you, and I give him the Charleston chew while making direct <gasps> eye contact what with Daryl. This? this is a confectionery that maybe will help you in your travels because it seems like you're having a tough day, sir. Ooh. And maybe you could appreciate this, and some other people could have learned to appreciate not taking these things for I, granted. I've had a very tough life indeed. Let me partake of this confection. I feel like we all. Also have a first aid kit, but um, yeah. <laughs> no, the Charleston shoe will do. It won't help. That's very kind of you. It won't. I've tried it. It's a thing. And he he starts like unwrapping the Charleston shoe with his bloody fingers, and it's all slippery. And he's like, "This could take a bit." And then he opens it and pops it in his mouth and starts to chew. And he goes, "Ooh, delectable! Yeah, the most delicious thing I've tasted in a fort month. I well, truly appreciate this." Well, you have a good day, sir. I, I already am. Thank you. <laughs> and I, I roll up the window and I keep trying. <laughs> Daryl Wilson's very ashamed of himself. <laughs> I think Ron thinks of his parents. <laughs> <laughs> yeah. Sorry, just, wish to wish to expand upon that. <laughs> no, just the dynamic. <laughs> just Ron is whisked back into his childhood. <laughs> Listening to Daryl and Henry, and yet there's a there's a comfort to the way Daryl and Henry interact that was lacking in Ron's parents, but still, he thinks of them. When you come up across the pit of myriad delights, you see that it is actually something of a misnomer. There are two pits, uh, one of which... <laughs> Whoa. Wow, guys, this place is really the pits. 
All right, you all know what to do. <laughs> Jesus, do we Christ. take half? Yeah, you take a D four with half, and Will now has an inspiration. How many inspira- You have you got a lot of. Well. You can only ever have one inspiration. I can only at any have given one, time. but so it you're is just fucking clowning, just showing off at this point. So yeah, in one of the pits, uh, you see what is clearly just a very large number of people having carnal knowledge of one another. Just you just Ooh. every every oh, every hey. orifice, every every possible thing you can Wait. imagine is happening is happening in that What's- pit. Is this the person who's studying the SAT again? Because I don't know. I don't know. Carnal. They're, they're having sex. Oh. They're all, it's a big orgy pit. Okay. When I thought pit, I thought like, you know, they throw people down and they die. So are we looking down this big pit? Or is it just like a little like dead in the earth? You're, you're on a rise, basically. Okay. And then beneath you. bet you, I am. Is- <laughs> <laughs> and there are two pits that both are basically the size of, um, you know, in a three ring circus, they're the size of like a ring. So they're about... 20 yards <laughs> 20 yards in diameter I've never heard somebody describe the size of like as one ring of a three ring circus okay <laughs> it's Anthony a- Burge I'm- old tiny <laughs> metaphors for the sale you've been to a three ring circus a third of that <laughs> you know when you went to the fun fair with your best gal and you shared a, a soda phosphate <laughs> typical three ring surface dimensions you yeah. know the traveling connies <laughs> Okay. <laughs> hey, hey, Enough Henry. of two ovens, back to back. You know how it is. I've never heard so much BDSM in a not BDSM podcast. <laughs> <laughs> okay, so a bunch of people are fucking in, in one In pit. one ring. And okay. in the other ring, you see uh, a group of three adventurers. You see a guy with a bow and arrow and a dude with a big old sword <laughs> and, a, and, a, and a shield and a guy who's like casting spells at things. And they are being completely obliterated by what seems to be five completely unrelated creatures. There's a, a flying hippogriff that just tears one's head off, a small puppy dog that's just sort of standing there not doing anything, and then a vampire that's sucking the life out of one of the other guys. I just um, want to say, Daryl Wilson has definitely not seen what's in the other pit. He's oh, only looking, he's looking he's at He's only the, looking in that one pit. The, the idea that Daryl Wilson's seeing this other stuff is absolutely He's still on the good. Cinemax pit. Yes, he's very, and he's like very uncomfortable <laughs> as, a, as a pure boy. As we're, like, by the um, way, as we're parked up there, I go, hey, hey, hey Henry, babe, make sure you set the parking brake. We don't want to roll into the, <laughs> to either of these pits. <laughs> yeah. Ooh, hey, uh, Glenn, this is, <laughs> you're probably used to this stuff, huh? Woo, all right. This looks like a pretty <laughs> good Sunday afternoon. Uh, Okay, right. so uh, it, it appears there's a lot of weird stuff going on, gentlemen. Um, um, nothing weird about sex. <laughs> there are also uh, crowds around both of the pits, and they're all cheering, and you can't really tell which one they're cheering for. Maybe it's for both of them. Maybe it's for everything. Mm. What okay. kind of dog is that? <laughs> what, what, what are you talking about? They're on what dog? That, that pup, can I roll to perceive what kind of dog that is? Go ahead. Got to get a good look at that dog. I got a 12, and it looks like a hug. Yeah. It does. That's what you think a hug looks like, whatever yep. that kind of dog is. <laughs> yep. Um, there's also a, uh, a ticket booth in front of the, the two pits. Basically, there's a staircase going down, and in front of that's a ticket booth with uh, an ogre standing in front of it. Okay, so apparently, you know, I, I'd have to say, if, I, if someone was telling me that a, a guy called the Lord of Chaos was throwing a party, this is kind of what I pictured it would look like. So I think we're in the right place. Um, I would say, for the most part, try to keep your hands to yourselves, guys, uh, and you know, don't let anything get into your mouth or your sort of like body area. Uh, what, if anyone would like to, you, uh, too bad you got rid of those condoms. I was right? about to say I have a second pack of condoms. If anyone would like to put them on their hands so you don't touch anything gross, I think hands, there's going to be a lot of right. fluids down there. Before we go in, though, yeah. I want to establish one rule. Anytime I'm on a field trip to a new place with oh my, my beautiful boys, we do a buddy system. Mm-hmm. So everyone in the van. Pick a buddy to keep your eye on during the next little part of our escapade here. Glenn, I'm going to say you're my buddy for today. All right. So we got to watch out for each other. Now, Daryl, Ron, Mm -hmm. can you guys be good buddies to each other and look out for each other? I was thinking about taking the dog as a buddy. Ron, where where in this orgy is there a dog? Just keep (laughs) looking. Just uh, Is there really a dog in this orgy? Just trust me. Keep looking. Where's this dog? (laughs) Okay, Glenn, I think you should be Daryl's buddy and yeah. I'll be Ron's buddy. Hey, Daryl, man. Uh, What's up, Glenn? It doesn't really change the longer you stare at it. Let's mm. uh, get our uh, head in the game to use a uh, sports uh, analogy. huh? Okay, buddies together, united forever. Let's go. And I open the door. I'm assuming you all exit the van? Yeah. Yeah. The ogre sees a bunch of you exiting the van, three of you wearing uh, the shirts of the doodler, and says, oh, that's, that's awful confusing. <laughs> <laughs> Tell me about it. Are you other emissaries? We sure are, friend, and we're here to see the Lord of Chaos. Oh, the Lord of Chaos. I should probably go get the sheriff. Um, Head on down to the ring without all the lovemaking in it, 
and I'll send the sheriff to come get you. Okay, can I ask you a question? <laughs> go, go right ahead. What's, what's going on here? Uh, we're, here we're, we're talking. Well, I, but what what's what manner of entertainment is this? We're from out of town, and, uh, and, and the sauciest things get where we're from is a little sport known as professional wrestling, uh, which does not have quite as much erotic or we, we've got violent. We've got professionals here in both in both rings. Uh, I mean, it's basically just it's all the enjoyments that life has to offer. You have life in its conception and then life in its end. It's sort of the whole gamut of the of the human experience. Well, as well, that's Alpha that's and beautiful. Omega. That sounds yeah. like a good career track. Um, you know anybody? You know, I've got business cards. So can anybody just go in that pit? Like, uh, if we wanted to go in that pit, which which one? The, in the there's fight one, one, absolutely. The, the, the pit. Wait, I, I finally noticed there's another pit. I go, oh my, like, <laughs> what? <clears throat> no, never mind. I'm just wondering if, hey, what were we doing? Uh, we're uh, here to see the Lord of Chaos to get uh, our sons sh- back. The sheriff. We're finding a sheriff. So th- as you guys are talking, um, a frustratingly handsome man comes up to you. And for the first time since you put on that shirt, you see something that is slightly more attractive than than you. Are you talking to me? Yeah, I'm talking to Daryl. Yeah, you're directly at yeah, me. Yeah, okay. sorry. Was, Daryl, for the, for the first time, you're like, oh, that's what a properly handsome man who's handsome all the time looks like. <laughs> Who doesn't okay. need clothing-based peck enhancement. He has a very large uh, an emblem that looks like a silver shield on his lapel, and he says, oh, that's that's quite perplexing. Hi, I'm, I'm, I'm Sheriff... Fuck, what is the name I gave this? Boreanus. <laughs> <laughs> Hi, I'm Sheriff Boreanus. <laughs> that name snaps me out of looking at the orgy. <laughs> And I turn, and I feel like for a second he does look like David Boreanaz. He looks exactly kind of like David Boreanaz. Swerves. He looks just like him. And he looks like peak David Boreanaz, like season five of Angel David Boreanaz. Yeah. Stop. Like I the- would go season three, but let's go on. <laughs> I go, oh, uh, hi, I'm... <clears throat> I'm Will Willie. I'm Daryl Will. I'm Daryl. Daryl. Hi, nice to meet you. I put my hand out. He puts out his hand for a handshake, and it is so strong. <laughs> it is the strongest handshake you've ever had. Oh, got quite a grip there, buddy. Um, I'm I'm Wilson, Daryl, and uh, these are my my friends, uh, Henry, Henry and uh, Hi, I'm Beth. I mean, I'm Ron. <laughs> <laughs> I know somebody who would like you though. Her name's Beth. <laughs> <laughs> So he looks you all over with a discerning gaze and he I shiver <laughs> <laughs> involuntary shiver. He, he, he draws a single finger across his chin in thought and he says at the count of three, all of you are going to tell me what your purpose here is. Uh, uh, I'm sorry. I have a question. One at once. Do we all go at once? Yes. All of you. Three beat or like on the word on, on three, three, two, one, go. You're all going to tell me why you're here. Three, two, Where one, go. Is, you're beautiful. We're <laughs> emissaries from another town. <laughs> so all of you said different things. Sorry. Uh, we're, uh, yeah, we're emissaries. We're looking, the Lord of Chaos. That's Can we we're call for. a dad huddle finally? Uh, excuse us for one <laughs> moment, sir. <laughs> Mr. Boreanis, we're going to, uh, we'll be right back. Guys, that guy's really handsome, right? What? I didn't notice. Okay, well, I just wanted to clear the air Wait, on that. Is this a real we... dad huddle? This yeah, is yeah, a real dad huddle. Okay, because I could okay. I could stay with with I could stay out of the huddle. Run. Stay with with Bori- I grab okay, Ron. Okay, okay, all right. Okay. Here, you're I'm a in. real guys, you're guys. a real dad. Oh. You're you're a real dad, Ron. Thank sure. You. I put both my hands on Ron's shoulder. You're a real dad. Ron tries not to cry. <laughs> all right, let's do this. Dad huddle. Okay. Um, I actually think, despite the fact that I blurted out the em- that we're emissaries because I'm scared, I think we need to just tell the truth. I think that's the simplest thing. Sounds like this guy's a stickler for bullshit. Let's just give it to him straight between the eyes and just and be straight shooters with him. Okay? Does that sound like a plan? Yeah. Okay. Uh, sir, we'd like to redo our answer. <laughs> <laughs> so he, he, he smirks a little bit in a knowing way. He says, I thought you might. We are from another world. We tumbled through a portal into your world, uh, along with our sons uh, who are missing. And uh, this this doodle that you see, this is in our world what's known as a soccer jersey and a mascot. Do you guys have sports here? Like, no. Is there is there like a like for the the people who do the fucking? Are they like? Do they have like a guy that they wear like that they many sell guys. toys of? Yeah. Oh, like a sponsor? Yeah, like a sponsor. Yes, yeah, there are many fuck sponsors. There, in the oh, so <laughs> <laughs> the doodler is the fuck as, sponsor. As, as, as he says fuck sponsor, you can see some of them wearing shirts that have like a bunch of logos on. <laughs> <laughs> like I never noticed that they had jerseys on. <laughs> the doodle, the doodler is a 
sigil for the fuck sponsor of our children's soccer team. <laughs> Your world sounds very debased. <laughs> and uh, it is. <laughs> well, that that can't possibly be true because cards on the table. The children who came in. I'm assuming they were yours. His. Yes, yeah, mine. Yeah, yes. That, yes. So they. By two beautiful boys, Lark, Lark and Sparrow. Has anyone? They, they disappeared. They, that is that is known to you. Uh, we've we've been informed, and we're hoping to to rectify that situation vis a vis finding them. Right. Right. I cannot specifically help you in that regard. I know not where they are. The Lord of Chaos may, but when they showed up, it was of great concern and interest to me because the this do, this doodler. Yes. Does resemble greatly uh, an eldritch god. <laughs> that some of us among the uh, 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 aristocracy. That thing mm-hmm. looks like a god. Yes, it is. Right. It is a noble and yet beautiful. It is many shapes okay. and yet it yeah, is one. Right. It is the perfection incarnate. Sure. I'm so proud of those boys. I just got to say it again. But that's so strange because in our world, it was just a fancy piece of shit. <laughs> <laughs> Sorry, I step away. <sighs> In our world, it was just the fanciful flight of uh, two beautiful boys' imagination. So that is equally perplexing what you tell me, sir. Well, doors have many keys, and it could be that the imaginations of your two beautiful children, who are fine, the two fine children, two okay children, could unlock the door that, that held the eldritch one. Oh, so they like kind of channeled some sort of ancient terror through their uh, doodles. But as I knew it, the door was to be opened when blood was drawn from the unsung hero. When blood was drawn from the one, is that like a Zeppelin song? I don't, Glenn, yeah, I don't think does that, that was do, on, nah. that wasn't on Houses of the Holy, I gotta say, nor Physical Graffiti, or any of the later, Coda, Mother, Ch- no, none of them. The, uh, the, the, the second less carnal uh, ring to your right that you can see, this is often used as a means of recreation, but as of late, I and uh, the other secret cult of the doodler, don't tell anybody, shh, just stay between us. Wait, uh, can you say that again? A little, what did you say? The secret cult of the you doodler, don't tell anybody. Cult, cult of, of the, the doodler. doodler. The secret cult called of the doodler Stop saying it so loudly so, uh, so you called the doodler too i mean we we thought it was easiest after your children decided to go <laughs> it, it never had a name we just referred to it as the eldritch one and your kids came in and we're like it's called the doodler so we get we now know its true name did you guys have like a renaming meeting or something like no it a- happened pretty immediately we all kind of like looked at each other we're like oh the doodler that's a good name i'm impressed that you were able to take it up so perfectly like so you know so soon yeah you i know. mean we have a we're very we're all sort of united of purpose fuck off what are you guys <laughs> talking about here's what i propose I still cannot be certain, 100% certain, that you are not charlatans. You don't seem to have an air of uh, magic about you that these two children did. They had magic about them? Oh, certainly. Henry, you did spray poison out of your fingertips. Oh, yeah. Yeah. Oh, fair enough. Let me just say this. In our world, they're called gifted. (laughs) Okay, sure. Gifted. (laughs) You certainly seem to be lacking in these gifts of which you speak. Thank God. So I, I I can give you an audience with the Lord of Chaos. All right. But oh, uh, no. I cannot be certain that you doing so would not set certain events into motion that would prevent the rising of the doodler, which is my priority, okay. obviously. The, the the secret cult of the doodler. Yes. The, that's what you're part of. Yes. And you're going to arrange for us to meet the Lord of Chaos? Is that what's right? I could. I could okay. arrange for you to meet the Lord of Chaos. But... It is entirely possible that you fit to a different part of the prophecy than the emissaries did. The emissary's job within the prophecy that we have been operating on since your before your children arrived was basically that the emissaries would show up, the Lord of Chaos would follow in his wake, and from there, the death of the unsung hero would summon the doodler and thus the end of uh, the world as we know it. But we would but feel to be fine. Re- but, but, to repl- <laughs> but to be replaced with a better one. Um, and you're, so you're like okay with that. Oh yeah, it would be replaced with a better world. And we, as the children of the doodler, would bear the fruits of that uh, labor. Really quick, how deep is this pit where everybody's fucking? Here's another metaphor that I'm sure will mean nothing to you. It's the distance from the scaffolding uh, atop a a theater stage at a high school down to the stage itself. And, like, how did people get down there? They're stairs. Okay. Daryl Wilson starts walking towards the stairs. (laughs) Okay. And he starts heading down into oh, the pit. Oh, you're ahead of me. I was about to suggest that you go to the to the the, the ring of combat. The combat? Oh. No. Oh. Uh, Daryl Wilson doesn't hear me. That he must just be a different. You, you might be the unsung heroes. Oh. Daryl Wilson is walking into the pit, the orgy pit. Uh, oh, so he so that one just okay. So that Darryl, one's Darryl. that one's clearly not the unsung hero. Daryl, do you want a Charleston shoe today or not? I just want to take a quick look. I no, start going down Darryl, the stairs. Daryl, I grab Daryl and <laughs> right. try to pull him back. Roll, roll dexterity opposed. Both of you roll dexterity. 13 plus 1. Uh, 17. Okay, so you catch 
Daryl's uh, uh, shirt just as he's about to, uh, and it rips off. <laughs> just, yeah, he just, gets just, Daryl's shirt and it tears from the back and then just sort of woof, and then all well, the- Well, so wait, that means that now he's unencumbered and shirtless <laughs> and walking towards the orgy pit. So oh, yeah, I guess out. so. From the back, I go, rock on, man. So, <laughs> wait, so Henry tore my shirt off. Yeah. Yes. I look at my flabby self, I look at Henry, and I push him into the pit. What are you doing? Oh. You want to go in the pit? Oh. All right. I'm halfway. I would say I'm halfway downstairs. But I was walking down the orgy pit, and Henry Henry came and tore my shirt, and I, yeah, I just push him. Oh. Okay, roll 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 an attack at him. It'll be it'll be for no damage, but it'll be nineteen. Just, oh my god. Okay. Do I do an opposing or what do I do? Uh, yeah. Why don't you roll dexterity to see if you can get out of the way? Uh, I'm gonna go ahead and use inspiration. <laughs> yeah, the uh, long shot there. Uh, I can, fall. Can into I the help? Pit. He's my buddy. Ron and I are standing back being like, hey, you think we should do something about our buddies? <laughs> All right, As yeah. I fall into the pit, I go, Glenn, he's your buddy! <laughs> Henry! I, was, I, just wanted, I just wanted to take a look! Oh, I, I start covering myself up, <laughs> embarrassed. Okay, so, uh... All right, shit. <laughs> boy, oh boy. So Henry hits the ground of the fuck pit, and you take a d6 of damage. Okay, uh, I can do that. I take four damage. And uh, you, as you hit the ground, a half-elf and a half-orc that are scissoring one another uh, sort of turn to look at you, and they go, what manner of beast is this? <laughs> uh, this beast is married. Sorry, gotta go. Uh, ooh, marriage. Mm. The, the delight of infidelity. Come closer, mm. mayhap. Is this a consensual pit? Uh, I'm, I'm out. Oh, I we're all about consent. If you don't want to do, you could, you could bounce. I, I, I'm going to go. I'm going to go. But you guys keep having fun. That's very, that's very cool. That's fine. That's too bad. We'll be here if you change your mind. <laughs> I scoot through as cleanly and carefully as I can. While avoiding eye contact with anything I'm seeing, which makes eye it very hard. Eye contact fluids, am I right? Yeah, yeah. roll, roll uh, uh, dexterity. I've got an 18. All right. You come through dry. <laughs> come through clean. <laughs> All right. Um, Sorry about that, Harry. I, I glare <laughs> at Daryl, and then I pull out another Charleston Chew, and I throw it into the pit. <laughs> <laughs> You're down dose today, buddy. You hear a voice go, ooh, delights of many varieties today. <laughs> I run into the minivan and get my original shirt and put it on. So I walk back up to the sheriff. All right. So he goes, all right, so I guess I'm sort of rethinking my whole you guys are the unsung heroes thing. <laughs> and it seems like y'all are just a bunch of crazy people. I could have been a hero. I just didn't do it. I just wasn't heroic. That, yeah, that's by definition not heroic. Oh. I've had a bit of a, an afternoon here. Clearly. I want to see if I can cinch my saddle, so to speak, around. What does that mean? That's that's old cowboy slang. Henry is a big fan of classic cowboy cinema and uh, and, and slang of the Old West. So uh, what I'm trying to say here, Pilgrim, He is, finds them very problematic, though, like at the yeah. same time. Yeah. <laughs> he's, he's uncomfortable. It's, it's with truly his aspects. guilty pleasure. Yes, <laughs> his white guilty pleasure. Uh, so let me see if I can figure this out here. So there's an ancient eldritch god. Yes. Jack. Yes. And there's a prophecy yes. that an emissary will show up of the god. Specifically two, which is two why it was so interesting. Uh, and the fact that they're twins, I'm sure, is like some sort of weird omen as well. Uh, no, that was just sort of a fun bonus. Okay. Uh, so then, but then after the emissaries show up, a, an unsung hero shows up and dies. And then the the doodler is called forth. Yeah, it was not necessarily dies, but yes, once the blood of the unsung hero is spilled before the eyes of the Lord of Chaos, then yes, supposedly the doodler should be called forth. I see. So you want us to go spill our blood, essentially. I want, yes. Be, being that you are so unusual, I was sort of hoping that- Could have just a asked, little, man. A little drop, guys. Like kind of jacked up. Here's a question. To I took four damage when I fell into the pit. Yes, yeah, so we know Did you're I... clearly not an unsung hero. Okay. And also, we don't really know how much blood it is. And also, I'm thinking, you four, how would, how do you feel vis-a-vis -vis the end of the world and the creation of a new one? I don't really care about this world. As if it gets me home, you guys do you, I guess. Yeah. Uh, no, I, mean, I don't know. Listen, I don't think I'm okay listen, with that. Listen, marriages end and new <laughs> ones begin. I don't, but he's talking about like a whole world blowing up. Not yeah. Marriage is the world. To me. <laughs> Woof. Not to my father. Woof. Amy yeah, so no, I'm good with the whatever happens, happens, yeah, end of the world. Yeah, I think it's yep, pretty fine, man. Like, you apocalypse. know, sometimes this stuff happens. You got some cool songs out of it. You rock and roll into the apocalypse. I'm going to cut to the chase. What's the quickest way for me to see my sons? Uh, your sons, I don't know. The Lord of Chaos. My thought is that I would throw you into the fighting arena, 
and then we would sort of see how you did. And depending on whether or not the Lord of Chaos thinks that you're worthy, maybe he might consider you these, the unsung heroes and then want to meet with you. I see. So he's pretty hard to see. Oh, so he Lord doesn't want Chaos. to meet with us right now. No, no, no. Uh, I, Lord, I don't bother the Lord of Chaos with anything that is not of the utmost importance. Oh, so you're like the man that decides whether or not we meet the big man. Yeah, I'm the man behind the man. Oh, okay. Okay, so guys, I think we should do some fighting here. I think we should get into this ring and maybe see if we can attract the attention of the Lord of Chaos. It has to be that pit, though. Yes, it is the fighting pit, (laughs) not the sex pit. Okay. If you wish to go use the sex pit afterward, you're more than welcome to, presuming that the people in there find you. No, we shouldn't. I take out my phone, which I don't know how much battery life I have. have. You actually have a lot of battery life because you have a Nokia. I am texting. I feel really guilty. I'm texting a text message to Carol, uh, my wife. I'm like, hey, you know, still trying to find the kids, having a fun time with the boys, not doing anything too crazy. Love you. Hope you're not doing anything I I wouldn't do or or almost. (laughs) Anyway, I love you, Carol. I'm texting that. Okay. LOL. So, <laughs> LOL. Smiley face. Roll smiley a face. d20 with advantage. That's a one. Oh. And that's a five. <laughs> okay, thank Christ you had advantage. Otherwise, you would have run out of battery on the one, so you're fine. Uh, but basically, now it's up to two. So when you roll, the next time you do anything with your phone, you'll have to make sure you don't get a one or a two. But I you see. always get advantage because you have a Nokia brick. <laughs> nice. Perfect. <laughs> that has a lot of battery life. Okay, <laughs> so you send that text off. You get a response very quickly. That's just focus on the kids. I don't care if you're having fun with your friends. <laughs> Our kids are gone. I fold up my phone <laughs> and I put it in my pocket. I, I, all right. I mean, I, I, I'm in. I, I, I feel like I'm starting to get a handle on the whatever weird mystical powers are coursing through my body. So and I, we have to fight like a hand to hand combat. Is that the kind you of you can fight deal? whatever you want? It just the, the Lord of Chaos only seems to respect combat. The Lord of Chaos doesn't even like to look at the other pit, but the Lord of Chaos has a lot of interest in what happens in this combat pit. So it feels like if you can go in and do something impressive, maybe the Lord of Chaos will yeah. deign to, to meet with you one-on-one. He's got to show the Lord of Chaos that we're big men. I go to the back of the minivan. Like, yeah, like, let's see Darnell do this, huh? And I get the golf club. I go, you ready for this, Henry? I'm ready because I really want to see my sons and I'll kick anyone's ass that I need to to get to them, you know, which is slightly more aggro than I normally go. But what Fuck the yeah. hey? I take my shirt off. <laughs> I walk in with a golf club into the pit. Well, I guess if we're going to throw down, I guess uh, well, my buddy wants to throw down. And then according to the buddy system. Buddy system, Glenn. I got to go help my buddy out. So I take out my Kershaw brand everyday carry knife. I flick it open. And I go, I guess we're fighting. Well, nothing makes me angrier than a middleman gatekeeping a career path. So I take my <laughs> razor sharp business cards and I stick them in my wallet. And they barely stay in there because they're so fragging sharp. <laughs> Okay, so nestled in with a lot of the other uh, audience members and stuff is a small box, uh, like you know you might see at medieval knights or whatever for the king. Sorry, that's, that'd be medieval times, Anthony. Oh, sorry, medieval times. I'm so sorry. I was too busy uh, pounding pussy while the rest of you were going to medieval time. Um, and you see an eight foot tall. <laughs> I'm so sorry I said that. Medieval times is great, man. It, it's 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 a great way to, if you want to have food and make sure that you're never more than 20 feet away from horse shit, it's a great way to spend the night, yeah. Um, I've never you been. See, I'm in, guessing medieval times is going to sponsor the podcast. <laughs> you see an eight foot tall creature wearing a very large black coat that completely covers its body. Its face is shadowed, looks like a ring wraith. Henry, you in your heart know that this is the Lord of Chaos. This is is this creature that seemingly replaced your kids or did away with them or something like that. It's holding a hand up like this so that it can't see the sex ring, and it's just focusing on the combat ring. Interesting. And so here's how this is going to work, uh, sort of breaking character for a second. I brought a bunch of creature cards that vary in level from zero to like five. So Ooh. the way that this works okay. is that uh, because you're all level two, any creature that is level two is going to be a well-balanced fight for you on its own. In order to get the Lord of Chaos's favor, I'm going to roll a D6. And the, if you roll a six, then you've got his favor. You're fine. You're cool. Okay. Every creature you choose to pull from this deck which will fight you simultaneously, will give you a bonus. If you pull one of these, then you only need to get a five or a six. If you pull two of these, you can get a four, five, or six. Okay. Pull three and so on and so forth. But I'm going to pull them randomly. Okay. So there's no guarantee that what's going to come out is going to be a balanced experience for you. Yeah, okay, just to clarify. So we need to roll a six, mm-hmm. to, and then we get like extra dice. Oh, no, it just lowers the threshold for yes. what impresses Basically, him. yeah. So like if you don't, uh, if you can't impress oh. him, Boreana says, if you don't impress the Lord of Chaos, clearly you weren't the chosen ones. You have nothing to do with this prophecy. I will escort you on your way. Maybe if you're nice, I won't have you killed for knowing about the cult. You're only going to get one chance to impress the Lord of okay, Chaos. Okay, so we get one chance. So if we fight three monsters, we have to roll a three, four, five, or six. Mm-hmm. But there's no way of no. Yeah, basically, every you're playing a risk reward game. Yeah, yeah. 
So interesting. And I'm assuming the other people we saw got killed, the other adventurers. Oh, yeah. As you come down into the fight pit, the corpses or what's left of them of the previous adventures that you saw are dragged away. The griffin and the dog and the other creatures are sort of put back into cages and lowered underground on sort of rudimentary pulley systems. Is the dog okay? The dog's fine. Okay, cool. Oh, so the dog was one of the things they were fighting. Yeah, Uh-oh. I thought that was a hero. Here's a yeah. question. Why is the Lord of Chaos so intent on not looking at the sex pit? That's what I want to know. That's very interesting to me. Because that, to me, gentlemen, seems like a weakness to be exploited. Here's what I'm thinking. <laughs> this is out of character. This isn't I'm Henry. Listening. Oh, this I'm is, listening. I'm listening. we all get down? <laughs> <laughs> if we all fuck in front of the Lord of Chaos, he won't know what to I'm do. I'm saying... What is the ultimate right, chaos? Henry, Henry, Henry whispers to his, his bros, if things go south in this arena, here's what I'm thinking. Is if we can't handle the monsters, what is going to impress the Lord of Chaos more than getting a little crazy ourselves? I just hail Mary throws. I think we all got to get naked. Yeah, I mean, if we can't go out fighting, we should go out fucking. Because then, like, because he's what? What is he looking away for? Because then it's he'll true. be looking. That's a good point. We, we show him what he doesn't want to look at, and maybe he'll respect that. Yeah, we want to go out swinging one way or the other. Wink, 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 wink. <laughs> if wink, I remember wink, wink, wink. from one of my favorite movies, is three hundred. And I did some research, and I remember. Of fucking course it is. And I remember the Spartans <laughs> would fight like naked to like intimidate their enemies. I, I like what you're getting at, Henry. So maybe we, you're saying we should get nude. I just start. Do- I just start. <laughs> Daryl Wilson gets naked, and I'm holding my golf club naked, ready to fight. I'm like, uh, let's do this. Come on, Ron. Let's show us what you got. I look over at my buddy and I shrug and I'm like, I mean, I guess we're fighting naked. We're fighting naked. That's how the buddy system works. Oh, save your sons, Henry. Uh, oh, it's going to if if everyone's naked, but me, then I'm the naked one. And that's weird because like, it's just I'm a conformist. I'm going to go along with it. And I we're take all off my naked. clothes. Okay, all right. Okay. okay all, all right. right. All right. I, ta- I take off. I Ron takes off his pants and then there's another pair of pants <laughs> of, the, of that pair of pants. Okay. Come on, Ron. Let's do this. All right. I take off the pants again, and there's a there's just a really thick pair of underwear, just like a really nice sort of boxer situation going on. What kind of what kind of print on that boxers? Um, it's it's me undies. <laughs> <laughs> Use the code Dungeons and Daddies. And <laughs> Put it in my headphones when I start listening to a book from audible.com. <laughs> it's it's right. just a bunch of Harry's razor blades. <laughs> all right. The Spartans would indeed become hairless before this battle. Let's all shave our body hair. And the, the ring you notice has your a body square hair? space in the middle of it. Oh, God. All right. Shave your body hair because Madison or even is changing the way women color their hair. <laughs> <laughs> all right, let's do this. Okay, all right. Well, before before you decide to, so you're all naked, huh? We're naked, well, except for Ron, who's got like. <laughs> then he looks very upset. <laughs> so you're about to find out why. <laughs> oh no! Because I had this whole fight thing planned, <laughs> and you get naked, and what you in, when you're expecting to start choosing to fight some creatures, what Henry, you hear a very familiar set of voices go, no. <laughs> And you see the Lord of Chaos throws off his cloak. <laughs> and it is clearly Lark and Sparrow standing on top of each other's shoulders. And they go, Dad! <laughs> Dungeons and Daddies is Anthony Birch, Beth May, Matt Arnold, Will Campos, and myself, Freddie Wong. Theme song by Maxton Waller. We have some brand new podcast cover art drawn by Alex Moore. You can find him at Not Another Alex on Twitter and Alex Moore Illustration on Instagram. You can find us on Twitter at Dungeons and Dads and join our Facebook group at bit.ly slash Dungeon Dads. If you've enjoyed this podcast, please leave us an iTunes review because I'm told that deep in the unknowable depths of algorithmic recommendation engines that I iTunes reviews are like the best thing. It's the NOS to continue the automotive analogy that I was using there. We're sticking to new episodes every two weeks, so episode four will be coming out March 12th, and we'll see you then. There was a time when you could read between.